Welcome to Meltdown Comics in Hollywood, California. Carmen Town is now in session. Please welcome to the stage the mayor of Harmon Town, Mr. Dan Harmon. Thank you so much. Uh, Happy New Year, 20, 2015. We're, we're in Back to the Future's version of the future. <laughs> are, are we all wear, wearing metal hats and things like that? Yeah, we got little LEDs. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you have to choose whether you're a Lobo, a, 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 a Squeeb Squab, or a Zip Head. What's the... the there's three... Tra- you're a Trank, a Lobo. Low res bojo. What, what, wait, do you, you actually know what's the... Yeah. Lo- low res bojo and <laughs> flapjack what are the three <laughs> this is, that's back to the future too anyway yeah by the, oh uh youtube recommend uh sh- i recommend youtube it's amazing <laughs> it's uh, videos just direct to your computer uh there is a uh, the next time you're like like oh boy what do i i got nothing to do i got nothing to think about my world isn't isn't uh D- dark enough. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, uh, there, there is. Uh, this will actually lighten it up. I, 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 it, th- th- there's these videos. Schraub sent me. Uh, there's this guy. This is my new fascination: is the people who are like uh, exposing things, like the Illuminati things, <laughs> like the patterns that they see and stuff. You've seen the one that's like uh, angels in the outfield. There's a guy who's, who's, who's proving that angels in the outfield is like a pedophile, uh, is like a pedophile spell that it's casting on you, and it just keeps like freeze framing, going, "Look, look where his eyes are looking, right at the little boy's dick," and it's like, like the, it's 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 like a yeah, yeah. The Back to the Future one is like fucking amazing. Like there's this guy who's just like, and he'll he'll throw he throws everything at it, like he. He, first of all, he, well, he, well, he, he see, he, he sees every, every, every moon landing, JFK, and uh, and 9/11 in Back to the Future, like, 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 like he literally says at one point in his video, the movie is is crawling with 9/11s. <laughs> <laughs> As he's pointing them out, there's a, there is like a point, like for example, like when the DeLorean finally like like goes back to the future and leaves the trail of uh, of, of eleven uh, uh, as it heads for the movie theater, and the and the camera pans back, and there is a fucking goddamn if there isn't a goddamn nine, like it's like it's like some kind of like western themed breakfast place or something with a lasso for a logo, and it's like nine eleven. I'm a, I'm a convert, but. The, the the crazy thing about it is that the guy the guy can detect every 9/11 if he sees JFK's head everywhere um it's a, it's a, like, 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 but but he doesn't know that there's a difference between back to the future 1 and 2 <laughs> he keeps referring to him as the same movie and it's like no that's the second one you, you're in the splash zone here my friend you're going to get a little <laughs> bit of it's vo- what happens is the vodka has a uh, my mustache has a wick effect <laughs> i take a drink the vodka capillaries up and so then, whenever I have a explosive, explosive. The other day, I I picked a pack of peppers. I don't know. <laughs> it's just vodka. It's not even spit. It's just pure vodka. It's good for you. So you, if you sit, if you sit in the right place, you can get fucked up. Or... Yeah, yeah. Especially him. Look at him. He's like he's a pretty fresh faced young man. I, I I'd believe you could get drunk off of a little bit of aerosol vodka. That's a compliment. You're a very very handsome little boy. <laughs> if, if you want to watch Angels in the Outfield later. Uh, Dan, is it me or is your is your beard achieving greatness? <laughs> I, I, I can actually I noticed backstage I can actually grab it with my fist now. Like yeah. there's a thing here I can grab. A, a, a threshold I has been crossed with your beard. I lost my trimmer at the wedding. I, or I didn't. I, it's somewhere in the house. Uh, I had my beard trimmer. I trimmed my beard for the wedding, and I haven't trimmed it since. So this is. If you ba- yeah. See, it, it looks trimmed though. It looks like you've you've manicured a nice like. Uh, Gentle Ben kind of beard. <laughs> I have it. Uh, anyways, I what 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 I, YouTube. We're talking about YouTube. Well, we're no. <laughs> I, I I so yeah. Just check that out. Just Google uh, or YouTube uh, or Yahoo. Use Yahoo. 
the uh, back back to back to the future 9/11. Uh, uh, like the the JFK stuff is really interesting because the guy is convinced that the. Uh, uh, Hill Valley is identical to Dealey Plaza, and that if you, if, and that Marty McFly is standing where Kennedy was shot when he's looking at, at the sports true. almanac, um, and that in the window where you see the sports almanac, you see two different presidents uh, portrayed two dimensionally, but then you can see a Kennedy head that is three dimensional. Thus proving the the point, which is that Kennedy is a transcendent, like like multi-dimensional <laughs> being, and his assassination has something to do with Back to the Future <laughs> and 9/11. Spielberg has done it again. <laughs> and the, and the guy keeps cutting. He's oh, of course he's of course he's Gaga for the Twin Pines thing. Of course he's like he's crazy about the Twin Pines thing. And he's like he's like for some reason now there's one pine. M- motherfucker, watch the movie that you're. <laughs> It's not a hidden message. It's the the joke is that the it's like why is there now one pine? It's a bit. It's a it's pine eleven. <laughs> That's been our show. Thanks guys. Right, Thanks for well, coming. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, the thing is that wasn't even funny. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you guys are a real pushover. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 a hot crowd. We gotta we gotta reward them. Oh, gotta reward them for this heat. <laughs> gotta make some make some popcorn with this. Um, the uh, uh, so uh, the the this is the last week I think that the the music uh, is gonna be just a free for all copyright wise. Like like, should I just play, play Beatles all night then? Yeah yeah. <laughs> But we're asking, uh, if you go to Harmontown dot, uh, harmontownmusic.tumblr.com, if you're a musician anywhere in the world, really, there's already people that are giving us stuff that we could we can use uh, under a term that they can agree to. Like, um, we'll, we'll, we'll use people's stuff who, who let us use their music, and we'll, we'll be able to give you yeah, credit. That, that'll, be, that'll be fun, because I, I love being able to play whatever I want, but I would love to, like, if, if it was all... Armenian music that'd be very yeah, cool yeah yeah well it'd be cool cause yeah and then you'd do like a little thing you know especially like like stir, stir me up a little hip hop uh, uh, pudding <laughs> you little hip hoppers out there within the sound of my voice you know you, you could be you could be really you could, you could I'm sure that would be a real honor <laughs> For, 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 for your beats to be uh, served up alongside my my dropped science. Uh, okay, so Sim City Build It uh, is going on in the news. I'm playing it on my iPad, and uh, you know how those Sims, uh, you know how the Sims like they talk like gibberish, like Sim language, like they go like ar gar you know. Uh-huh. There's a guy every time you uh, every time you click on. Uh, a guy that's gonna that's gonna sell you something or buy something from you, I he just, he goes he goes, pussy whips, pussy whips, yeah, pussy whips, yeah, yeah, or lips, like, I, I, it's a, it's a, it's it's, it, pussy whips, yeah, check it out for yourself. It's free it's free to play, so check it out. Um, but of course, after a while, you you might have to buy magic dollars to keep potatoes from taking a year to grow. It's a goddamn virus. This this style of game, terrible. Dan, I, I was driving here and I had my uh, my iPad plugged into my, uh, my my car like iPod thingy, and I I forgot someone named Kyle Cober- Coberly. Does anyone know him? Kyle Coberly. He sent us this. I'm in town. Send us, send us cool shit. We'll play it. <laughs> that that's that seems like a little bit of some backdoor shenanigans. Like that guy's a little more into you than me. 
Hey, man. Uh, Johnny Carson's on the show. Now, please welcome <laughs> Ed McMahon. Edward Anastasia. <laughs> McMahon. Because Davis doesn't even rhyme with anything. It's a, it's a hard name to rhyme. Uh, selfie sticks. Selfie sticks. <laughs> Are happening in the news. <laughs> I was a, you, you got back from Paris. I was at the Eiffel Tower like a couple weeks before you, and everybody had their goddamn selfies. Selfies be sticking. <laughs> People be selfie sticking. <laughs> you got me, man. I don't know. They, they were all over did Venice. You, did, did you get the thing when you were in Paris uh, where the people were? Do you speak English? And, and there, there are women that walk up to you. They, do you speak English? I don't talk to women. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, that's a hard line. <laughs> no, it's, it's just people, it's like you know people are like panhandlers, but the thing uh, is, you, you look American. Do you speak English? That uh, that we uh, the the a uh, 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 previous trip to Paris, I think uh, I I encountered like somebody came up and thrust a note into my hands that was like this long tragic tale of like my child is basically like a. A, a global kind of born identity version of of I ran out of gas. My kids are in the car, right, but it was like like much more like creepy. Like like you know why do I know where the exits are? Um, where's my safety deposit box? I can't even remember how we responded to it. You said yes, like that's happened to you. Like what? Do you remember what it is? Like what's the in and out of it? It's like. Yeah, and you just kind of have to give the note back. You're like, here's your, here's your note back. So selfie sticks. So, so, selfie sticks are, are happening. Do you, do you have one? I don't have a selfie stick. Wait, wait, what's the point of a selfie stick? Is that, is that, you, if you don't have a friend to hold your camera? Is that, is... I don't know. Well, I saw... I saw so first I saw people... The first, I, the first selfie stick I saw was in Venice. Uh, and I thought, oh, this must just be something. Like maybe it's canal based. Maybe people want to take. The, maybe there's too many canals here, and uh, maybe the, maybe it's an adaptation, like a gondola. You know, like a it's like, like you can't take a, a good selfie. Like, pe- too many people lose their phones over the canal. Maybe. <laughs> Um, uh, but then it turned out, oh, no, I've just arrived in, in Europe as the selfie stick has arrived it, on are, humanity. Are these people walking around by themselves with the selfie stick, or are they with other people? I saw a couple. I was walking in Paris behind a couple, um, not even in, like, a touristy place. And I, I, I was behind a couple in an empty street, and they were walking and holding hands. And the man uh, let go of her hand, took the selfie stick, extended it. Got and got like a tracking like uh, like 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 selfie stick shot of them walking just for a little bit and then put it they both they kept their heads forward right while he did it he got the shot and then re telescoped so, so they're it. just like they're like they're like Survivor Man walking down the road like just like filming themselves I don't know yeah it's just I guess it's just they feel it's a better shot I guess it's like a little jib for them I don't like it yeah. I'm, 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 I'm again it. Well, I, I, I did. Was it worth it, Adam? <laughs> All right. Adam, if you had a selfie stick, would that have been easier for you? Wow. I would. Uh, yeah. If everybody ne- next week, everybody bring selfie sticks and <laughs> we'll do something with them. I don't know. It worked for Ellen. Um, all right. The, uh, would, 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 would you get a selfie stick if, if you had one? Would you <laughs> would use it? You, would you, if, if I was able, would you? Would you get a selfie? No, I would not. I don't. I, I was. I was. I was definitely. I had a lot of opportunities to get a selfie. If somebody, stick. if somebody gifted you one at work, and would you? Would you? Would you ironically carry it around and then use it? No, I would use. I would use it to see what the hubbub's about. It just seems like a stick with your camera on the end of it. Yeah, it's stupid. Well, ask a stranger. Ask a stranger and say, take a fucking picture of me. Yeah. Well. I mean, maybe that's. I don't know. You, you don't have. You, yeah. Well, I, whatever he said is true too. You, you, you both have your points. Your beard has got me mesmerized. Your, your beard is really good. Also, it's, it, you, 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 the gray is coming in nicely. Like you, you now have a properly gray beard. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> he's uh, Liam Neeson. Is uh, he? He's. Uh, <laughs> Liam Neeson is in Taken Three, and he's uh, he he uh, 
There's a somebody somebody sent me a, a link to a, a LinkedIn like promotion where he's like he's it's him doing his character saying like oh, my name's uh, Connor McJohnson whatever his character's name is. Me and my friends have a particular set of skills, um, <laughs> skills like enhanced conversation. Uh, and then they'll cut to like a, a clip from Taken where they're like beating people up. Uh, aerodynamic uh, p- persuasion, and then throwing a guy out a window. Um, <laughs> and, and, and then and then he goes on to say say like, do you have a particular set of skills? If you send in your LinkedIn profile, um, a, a lucky winner will have me read their resume to their prospective employers, explaining their particular set of skills. Wait. He keeps saying particular set of skills for real. Yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty amazing. Why, why don't we try that? Why, why don't we get get on that? Go ahead. Yeah, li, li, that, that's what you're supposed to do. Do it. Get 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 on LinkedIn and make a profile. What is, what is LinkedIn? It's something that everyone outside LA uses. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> I don't understand it at yeah. all. Yeah. It's, it's, it's job it's, Facebook. It's, it's just as exciting as it sounds. It's a resume. It's like a. It's like the internet equivalent of while someone's driving by you on a on a on a road, throwing your resume through their back window, <laughs> so that they have it. <laughs> it, it, it <laughs> except unless you're hiring a backseat person, you're gonna find it and be annoyed. You're gonna be like, who put this garbage in my car, or my inbox? The cool thing about it is that, like, like, like I, I'll see every once in a while, I'll get a LinkedIn profile, like, a LinkedIn request from somebody, like, from, like, 12 years ago that was, like, a, like, a bigger shot than me and, like, now is, like, sending me their LinkedIn profile. That's kind of cool. <laughs> it's, 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 like, seeing them, like, 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 you know, with, you know, selling selfie sticks on a <laughs> boardwalk or something. <sighs> LinkedIn. I'm sure it's. I'm sure LinkedIn is is great for people, but I, I just I don't understand. You know, so it helps you if maybe if you stain glass, but you don't like to cut glass, and you send your LinkedIn profile out, and there's some guy that's like he only likes cutting glass, but he doesn't know how to stain it. <laughs> I think that's the idea. Did you enjoy your honeymoon? Was it fun? Yeah, because you you guys went everywhere. You guys were in Dublin and Paris and Venice. Yeah, I figured out why I love uh, Dublin and, and Ireland because uh, we went to like this uh, st- Irish storytelling night. Like uh, it was a very touristy thing. Like in this in this bar, which was like you get a dinner and this lady stood in front of a fireplace and told Irish stories and sang songs and stuff. <laughs> It was really cool, and uh, she explained uh, Irish history, and I, I, it kind of dawned on me, like listening to this stuff, why I fetishize uh, Irish culture is because they're they're a European culture without they didn't have a Renaissance, they don't they don't have they didn't participate in this rich people bullshit, like they they're they're a, they're their own little little thing, like they don't if you go back in their history, any other like European culture, it's like. If you go to their museums or whatever, there's gonna be some like red suspenders at some point, like or some like fancy sh- pointy shoes or like a windmill hat or something, like like oh, and then we did this. Oh, this is what we're famous for. He could do it to do. Like 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 look at us. Like we, we look like flower people or like 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 we got we got perfume on a, on our on our on our on our on our, on our face. Um, what it, what, what country is that? The one I just described, yeah. like all of them except for Dublin, you know, like I, I, I all uh, the, the, the country of Dublin. I thought I, 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 I thought you said city. The, uh, the, 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 they're just they're just poor potato people. They just grew with the potato. They're just they're just they're just dirty little people, and they and they had to. They, 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 I, they. I, I wish, th- I wish that was inflammatory enough for you to get letters about that. No, they don't care because they've been you through dirty the- potato people. <laughs> they're fine with that. They don't care. They, they, they have a great I, sense of humor. They don't. They're not offended. I think, I think everybody cares about you when you call them dirty little people. <laughs> You're wrong. I, we we had our Irish friend Graham Linehan here last 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 a couple of weeks ago. That, uh, that, that dirty little guy. He's a big, he's a big guy. He's, shut up, Adam. 
if, if you told him I, I called Irish people dirty little potato people, not on Twitter though, out of context, don't. But uh, like he'd be, he'd be I, I, like, yeah, that's, you, that about you, you sums said, it up. You said it, you said it in context though. You you called Irish people dirty little potato people. <laughs> yes, and so they're they're. <laughs> All of their songs and poetry and literature and things like they're they're not they don't come out of any kind of uh, nobility or anything. It's kind of like uh, it's very nice. Didn't really didn't really dawn on me until I was until I was re- really learning about it uh, over uh, over uh, mashed potatoes. They still love potatoes over there too. That their 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 civilization exploded because of the potato. The potato became a thing like that they could do, and they 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 grew they grew in population quite a bit, uh, and then of course there was the potato blight, and then like things got real bad for them, and uh, uh, you know the the rest is uh, history. Can you sing a little Irish song for us about it? <laughs> she, that's what, that's what she would do. She would go like, oh, and there's a there's a, a st- uh, one, one of the fairies of, 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 the, of the potato patch was the Shin Lanin. The Shin Lanin was a lovely woman, would take the form of a very seductive lady. And she would come a calling when the things and blah, blah, blah. And, there, she, and, and then, and there's a song about her. She Well, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> She sounded beautiful. I, I bought her CD. That's how beautiful she sounded. I don't even have a CD player. I just, I just, I just bought it because I'm like, make more music. I don't know. Keep making it. There's a, there's a fairy of the potato patch? No, I, I made that all up. <laughs> there, there's No, there's a, that, that was one of the coolest things about uh, Irish folklore was the the uh, fairy uh, the, I don't know just the idea of fairies like uh, the we we all uh, you know have our understanding of fairies like t- the Tinker Bells and the whatnot they they're always for us they're always small and they always have insect wings and they have like you know like, like you know there's a very specific fairy like kind of image we get in our head but 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 the word fairy originally just meant it was just like it's just kind of these crazy like magical beings that are kind of one foot in one foot out like um, it was a, a you know it's pre Christian mythology that got uh, Christianized but like the the way that they Christianized it was to say that uh, when Lucifer went down from heaven into hell there were there were a bunch of angels uh, you know who were like totally like hail Lucifer I'm gonna go with him right away and then there were like the angels that were like fuck Lucifer I'm gonna stay stay up here but then there were like the kind of like I don't know let's see where the action is um (laughs) kind of wandering downward and then there was like an angel that went to God and said uh, come on give those guys a break don't don't make them go all the way to hell and uh, and then God like snapped his fingers and at the exact moment you know when he when he called you know it's like play it where it lays so some 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 angels were like you know in the ocean and some were in a rock and some were like uh, had half of their head in a flower and their foot in a you know a pork chop or something and <laughs> So, 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 like that's the kind of fairy you are, you know. Like you're the you're you're a, if you're a, if you if you you get a pork chop for a foot and then a like a like a flower for a hand and then but it's just like you know their fairies are like they could be monsters. They're like cenobites. They're uh, they're angels to some and demons to to others. And a, and a leprechaun is one of those. A leprechaun is a fairy. Jeff, did you know that? I did not. What what do they call the one that has half a foot and a pork chop? That's a, I don't. That's a sin fire. Um, <laughs> did you enjoy uh, Venice, Italy? How was that for did you? Did you know a Did you know a banshee is also a fairy? I did not know. They're that. all fairies. Every every monster you could name. Werewolves are fairies. Are they? I made that up. <laughs> how but, was How was Venice for you? Did you enjoy that? Venice was cool. Uh, 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 I, I I I got to walk around Venice like uh, by myself on Christmas Eve. Uh, it was crazy because I didn't re- even realize until the daylight like how crowded that city can get. In the winter, it's pretty dead, which is why Peter Weller recommended it in his architecture blog, <laughs> which Aaron read. 
The reason we went to Venice is because Aaron read this article by Peter Weller, who is not only Ro- RoboCop apparently, but is also a PhD in yeah, like Renaissance a, architecture. He's a huge history history nut, yeah. Um, and is arguably like more into like Renaissance architecture than being into RoboCop. I don't I, <laughs> like, like, I, like but, but but like it, 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 we 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 were joking about because in the article he talks about why you should go to Venice in the winter, why it's so beautiful. And uh, um, uh, you, you know, so, so Aaron booked all this travel based on this like article that he wrote. Um, and we did, we went, we were going to a lot of the places that he recommended and we kept joking like, ah, we'll probably run into Peter Weller. But so we, we finished dinner on Christmas, Christmas uh, day. Was it, was it Christmas? Was it Christmas night? And uh, yeah, I finished dinner and, uh, went down to get our coats and we were putting on our coats in like this kind of coat room and and then in walks Peter Weller. No. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like, duh! Uh, just froze and Aaron looked at me like gave me this look that was like silently communicating like, like d- d- sh- d- should I? And I'm like, yeah, fucking go for it. Like, because I'm, I'm not going to talk to him like about, like I'm not going to go like, dead or alive, you're coming to Venice. Uh, <laughs> like, 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 like I, I, all I'm gonna talk about is RoboCop. But talk to him about fucking this bullshit you read him about. And, and, she, and she's like, "Excuse me, I'm sorry. We we uh, we read we read your article about about Venice in the winter." And, and he's like, "And now you're here." <laughs> he kind of he kind of held his hands out like. And the amazing thing is. You have to you have to understand like Peter Weller like while the 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 beautiful Christmas miracle this is like it was fucking Peter Weller but while he's while he's talking to us people are he's speaking in Italian to these you know people who are putting his winter clothes back on him and so as he's speaking to Aaron about Venice he's becoming this old Italian man. Because like the cape and the scarf and the hat are going on. So, so it's like, like, like kind of like RoboCop kind of came in and it was like, and then talked to him and then he be, slowly became like, you know, I don't know, he just started, like, like, he became like one of those cool old guys that walks through like an Italian city like, like, like at night, like looking at a pocket watch and eating a, eating a panini. Um, that, 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 but, but so, so he, just t- he just talked to Aaron for like, you know, know 15 minutes or so about like like how cool venice is and why he wrote that article and uh and and i just i, I just sat there and stared like <laughs> yeah that's it uh, that's, uh, that's all that's you know i don't know if aaron's got a different version of that story but that's i love that that's it was pretty it was pretty amazing it was like just a really magical thing like when you when you when something like that happens you kind of like you kind of you kind of like gather gather it up in a little jar and you kind of like just want to run out like right away, but the, you, you make it last as long as you can. You try not to, you know, overkill. Like so you just kind of like ran around the corner, and we're like skipping, going like, hey, look, 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 he's right behind us. He's right behind us. But like, gotta gotta get somewhere safe so we can like just crack up and like roll around on the cobble, uh, like 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 freaking out, like how, like like repeating every 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 word. That's so good. He had a purple cashmere scarf. It had to be a gift, like, like. <laughs> it, 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 looked, it looked so odd. I think someone gave him a purple cashmere scarf he for. He bought it for a dollar. He, he <laughs> bought it for a dollar, Adam. It's, I hate myself. Oh. Oh, wow. I, I'm sad that I got that joke. <laughs> did, you, did you ever see the new RoboCop? No. Yeah, I saw it. So. Did they did they stick with a new uh, outfit or did they they re- they redid the outfit? Didn't yeah, they, they redo it. Yeah, yeah, and they make a point of redoing it. Like they, like they have a scene where a guy goes like, "You should make it black." Like, I don't even understand what they were doing. I don't get it. I don't like it. I don't like. I don't like it. I did, uh, I, I, I did some terrible terrible movie that never never was released with uh, Kurtwood Smith and he was in it. We never worked together, and uh, he sat in front of me at the screening and it was so bad. And uh, I, I just I was freaking out because uh, RoboCop Kurtwood Smith was in front of me, and at the end he he, he grabs me. I I was dead on page forty, and at, at the end of the movie he grabs me by my collar, like by my tie, and pulls me toward him. He goes, "Boy, did they kill you too early." <laughs> I said, "I got out where the getting was good." Mm-hmm. How was, ca- how was ca- 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 Cabin Times? What was that called? Ca- it was called ca- Cabin Times. <laughs> 
it, well, it, was, wasn't, it, it was wasn't. About, it wasn't cabin it, fever because that's a thing, right? Like uh, it was called. Uh, it's something cabin. No, it's not. Cabin. Deadly cabin. <laughs> it's called, I wish it was called deadly cabin. It's called evil remains. Oh, evil remains. Colon. It's cabin time. <laughs> <laughs> It took place in a cabin. There was there, there was a cabin for certain. I've never seen that one. Uh, don't. Uh, it's a horror movie, and I went to the screening of it, and Kurt Smith is in front of me, and the, the other actors in the film, and they, they brought a bunch of people into the uh, the Lemley Theater, like in the Sunset Boulevard thingy, whatever the fuck it is, and uh, it's so bad. I think the audience thought it was a comedy, and so then <laughs> then they just started laughing through the whole thing. But, but it's not a comedy either. Uh, but the, nobody thought it was scary either. So it, it became a comedy, and we were just like sinking down into our seats. Uh, uh, and it was really bad. Yeah. Really, really, really bad. Well, all right, let's see what else we got here. I ran into a kid in Paris that uh, learned English from watching Community and Sopranos. Um, can you do an impression of what that would be like? <laughs> well, no, I mean, there's no... You know, what do you like? He would say, but bada, bada yes. boom, yes. a pop pop, or you know. <laughs> <laughs> met about it, <laughs> met, a, met about it. <laughs> uh, and, there, and there was another kid there, and he had this. He, well, whatever, no one's interested in that. I, I, whenever, I, I, no, I've told it like three times, and no one cares. The, the, there, was a, there was this other, this other French kid that showed up. Uh, and uh, he had an app on his phone that he showed me. I just thought this was kind of interesting because it's like, I don't know, it's a foreign people. We don't know anything about them. What are they doing? <laughs> like, how could your show that you write had never having been outside of the country, you know, how could it ever be appealing to like, it, you know, like people who don't speak the same language when they're when they're when they're when they're in grade school. And Did stuff. he watch it in French or in English? Uh, well, the, they, they they I think they watch it in uh, in English. Like I said, one of them one of them one of them would watch it with uh, French subtitles on first, and then change them to English subtitles, and then eventually turn the subtitles off. That's wow. that's something they do there. With, to, to they're so steeped in English, like you know, more so than we are steeped in French, um, that it's a little. It makes it it's a little more natural for them to be able to do that, but rest assured, we are a lazy bunch. That <laughs> I really am. I, I can't. I can't. I can't. I just. I can't do it. Like I. I can't. Like like Aaron. Aaron knows definitely more more French than me. But like also, I think there's this crucial thing where it's like. Shit, like there's just there's just a shamelessness it's like like, like uh, you have to you can't you can't like you have to like just be willing to speak wrong in order to ever successfully speak to someone who speaks a different language you can't be like this held up by this like 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 there's this fear that like seizes me I, uh, you know you just end up going like uh, uh, bonjour uh, uh, le bacon Le bacon. Le ba bacon. bacon. Le bacon. I'd like, I'd like le bacon. Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Good day. The bacon. <laughs> but but Aaron would kind of like slide, you know, sl slide into the French Uber and just be like, and the driver would be like, huh? What? <laughs> But 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 then like a couple minutes later he'd be like oh my jam oh my and she'd be like I'm like, I'm like right, so. are they both doing a bit or <laughs> they're like talking to each other about stuff and then Aaron Aaron got like bronchitis she thought she might have pneumonia so she got up in the middle of the night she's like coughing up a, a lung and she got on the phone and then she's like. Uh, I, I can't do an impression of it because it's like fluent French. I don't know she's like speaking to somebody about getting a doctor. Like she called somewhere in Paris, like a regular person trying to get a doctor, and was like, "Oh, je suis très malade." Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Jesus Christ! She's speaking French about dying and being sick and stuff. Like it's, it was like she took out sticks and made a fire. <laughs> and then she, and then she puked at uh, Versailles. Uh, we'll let, I think we'll, we'll let her tell that story. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, what 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 else am I going to talk about? Who cares, right? Uh, 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 what what what? Let me bring up my uh, my my honeymooned wife, Erin uh, McGathy. <laughs> Uh, did, you, did, 
you guys do a French style? You, you kiss both cheeks? <laughs> uh, we, we didn't. <laughs> Are you all better now? You you healthy again? I am. Uh, just recently, though, I still have a little thing in my throat. And today, I I, I did a, like a Channel 101 pilot, and there was an older woman there, uh, this actress who was brought in, who I don't think knew anybody. And I and I coughed, and like she had done some very nice woman, but she had done some like very like six seeming things earlier that made me kind of worried about her health. Like there was a fog machine, and uh, she said, "Oh, is something on fire?" <laughs> and and I said, "Oh no, that's a, that's a, that's a fog machine, and it's just it's just vapor." And she was like, oh, "Okay, okay, don't want anything to be on fire." And I was like, "Yeah, no one does, great." <laughs> um, but then ten minutes later, she she looked at me like she was looking through the pizza. Also, she was like examining the pizza, which is strange. But she had eaten pizza and was just looking, seeing all the pizza. And then she looked at me and she said, is something on fire? And I was like, ha, 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 ha. And she was like, is something on fire? Uh, no, it's a fog machine. It's vapor. And she was like, oh, OK. Um, but then five minutes later, I coughed. And she said, you need to get some help. So I guess I'm still a little sick. <laughs> yeah, right, everybody. You, you, don't, you don't sound that good. Like. In bed at night. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. oh no, we 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 sleep together. Ooh. <laughs> but we're not always sleeping. <laughs> right, because she keeps coughing. <laughs> very, very sick, and I was very proud of myself for calling the French doctor, and the French doctor came and uh, gave me, prescribed me some antibiotics, and they made me violently ill, and I threw up in Versailles after doing a ton of research and trying to convince Dan to go, and I was very self-righteous about how great I am about enjoying historical things, and I, I threw up right on history and was ushered out. <laughs> Escorted out um, while the tour continued, and I just slept. I, oh, I didn't tell you this because I was very ashamed, and I thought you'd be embarrassed. <laughs> but when I was escorted out, I was so sick. And you know when you're sick, you want to put your face up against something cold. <laughs> and so I was, <laughs> I was lying in the courtyard of Versailles with my face just on the stone. <laughs> Literally, like behind the Golden Gates, where <laughs> where, where Louis the Sixteenth first saw Marie Antoinette, and uh, and and the the the, the people of France uh, look, looked in, wanting to be there because that's what the French Revolution is, right? That they, I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, I was lying lying on the ground at Versailles, but put my very fancy coat over me so people didn't think I was homeless. And it worked out. Because so homeless people hate insulation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just like, well, I, I mean, because I definitely looked like there was something wrong, but I was on the inside of the gate, so I clearly bought a ticket. But people don't usually lie on the ground with their face on the stone of Versailles. So you put your coat over yourself so that people just thought you were a corpse? Like a <laughs> <laughs> well, I put it, I put it like over my shoulder, and then I had like out like a like my little guidebook, so it looked like I was kind of doing something. <laughs> I was very sick. You know when you position yourself in a sleeping position uh, when you have to sleep and you want people to think that you're doing it on purpose? It was that kind of thing. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> well, have you ever tried to uh, fake sleeping in, in an in a, uh, educational situation? Like, yeah. like you mean like putting your putting this your head knows. down like like yeah yeah like 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 in school you're sleeping you have your hand on your on your face and just your head down and then a book and a you learn how to hold a pen while you're sleeping right. so it looks like you're d doing something yeah I'm just glad you didn't you didn't make me go I mean I I I, I you didn't go. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. But you said you don't. You're like, why would I want to go to some guy's house? <laughs> and the and the and the only answer is, oh, this guy was really rich. No, <laughs> all right. I'm not gonna have this he argument. He told again. everybody what gonna, to do. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> so, so stupid. <laughs> so, so you you, you didn't go. No, I'm what, not what, gonna go to Versailles. What did you? 
<laughs> also hates Paris. I, I mean, it's, 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 it's uh, why is it so absurd? Because it's like we cut their heads off. Like we hated them. We didn't do that. We being modern people, we turned our back on the idea of all that shitty fucking. Yeah. Well, I wasn't going because I was like, ugh, the way they did their wallpaper is. Yes, you. Yes, no, I wasn't. No, that's, no, that's exactly why right. right people go. No, that's no, what, that's that, not that why people is. go. No, what that's not why people go. I'm walking through and I'm like, ugh, this is, this is where, this is where the royal court uh, met for the last time when they when they said, you know, uh, Louis the Fourteenth and Marie Antoinette, you have to you you have to stay here, you have to stay hostage because we have this big list of people who are going to be beheaded and there you know these mo so many moments and uh, you know M Marie Antoinette uh, is is Austrian and she's fourteen years old and she's married right away and she goes into her, to her room and she she's like ah this is this is my life and my life is perfect and my life is or my life is my life is terrible oh so many dresses and she has no idea what's going on and you get to be in these halls where people have been <laughs> I mean but I, I, I care more about that that stuff obviously do you think Peter Weller would have enjoyed that well of course yeah yeah that's what I mean that's the amazing thing about Peter Weller is he's he's part Dan part Aaron all <laughs> <laughs> uh, all purple scarf he cares about architecture he was Robocop yeah uh, I mean it's also what, what it's also do, magnificent what, what did you do instead Dan th that day uh, at that well at that particular time at, when you were, she was at Versailles I found a, a, a bar I could drink in in Paris because it was a British themed bar <laughs> so it was just made to be like a pub I, I can't like, like it's hard they don't have a, like a burgeoning cocktail culture in uh, Paris they do like I, I mean I, I went to Paris for the first time I, I never, I've never spent any time there like alone so I, I went there alone on, in the first week of December and I had friends there uh, that are these Parisian rock and rollers. Uh, they're very cool, and they, they kind of showed me around the first night, and then I was on my own, and I kind of like, um, I kind of failed. Like I, I, w I wasn't like, like doing anything cool. I was seeing some sites, went to went to see the you know museums and whatnot, but like I was intimidated by the. Uh, I don't speak any French, except the how do you do's and pleases and thank yous and stuff, and I asked my friends like, how come girls here just do not look at you? Like, in, I was in New York a week before, and people, like, flirt with each other. They, they make eye contact, and they look at you and either have a, fuck that guy or that, that guy's good-looking, or, like, or they don't care. In Paris, girls are gorgeous. Everybody's fucking skinny for some reason, and they all, they're all smoking, and nobody makes eye contact. And my friend uh, who's from there, he goes, he says, Jeff, is a, a girl in Paris, she looks at you one time, that means she is very interested in you. <laughs> if she looks at you a second time, that means she is going to fuck you. <laughs> And I said, I didn't get the fucking first look yet. And then uh, the last day I was there, I went to this fancy uh, cake place, like this, like, uh, like a gateau, something, you know, like, like a, uh, uh, what do you call it, P patisserie? patisserie. And a uh, really fancy place. I found out a way to get uh, French girls to look at you, walk around with a really nice box of cake. <laughs> I, I, I had a white box with gold lettering on it, and girls just like turning their heads. They, they want to know what's in that fucking box. Uh, so did you. So if they're... <laughs> <laughs> Oui. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, I went to a, a club one night and there was a, on the carpet this place called Shea Castell and on the, the carpet is all dicks, pussies and tits like it's, it's, it's ornate carpet if you look at it closely it's all this weird horny thing and down in the basement there's this piano and it was Serge Gainsbourg's old piano where he used to go play it kind of as his second home and there's cigar, a, a cigarette burns from like his cigarettes on it I went, I went there one night and there was nobody there on the last night I was there I met these people and they took me, uh, I, I went to La, La Perouse, uh, this place, like, right on the Seine, which is, like, from the 1700s, and, like, Victor Hugo used to go there. And I just did my, my old experiment of just going to a place and posting up, sitting at one place all night long. No one talked to me for two hours. And at the end, they're like, they kicked everybody else out, but they go, you can stay. And then at the end, they're like, there's a girl there that I loved. She was so beautiful. And she actually made eye contact with me. And uh, she was, like, the DJ there or one of the DJs, and they took me, they're like, you, you come to this club with us. I go, should I like, meet you there? And they go, no, no, you walk with me. And we, and we went there, and down in the basement where I'd been before, now it's filled with people, smoky, people playing piano, girls start taking their shirts off, and, and, and guys lighting cigarettes for them while they're dancing with their shirts off. It was so fucking French, I couldn't the, believe they were it. Lighting the, <laughs> they were lighting the women on fire? No, no. <laughs> There was, a, there was a girl, she took her shirt off, she's laying on the piano, and a guy that she doesn't know, 
It's a, it's a picture of it on, on my Instagram, and this guy, this really good-looking guy, lights a cigarette and puts it in her mouth. Oh. And, and on my Instagram, she's like, who is that guy? Like, she didn't know that guy. They all took me to this party afterwards where the, uh, the, it was three girls, the girl who was one of the DJs, and these, these two guys in this crazy house. It was like if uh, MC Escher and Frank Geary made a really gay Parisian house together. Because <laughs> <laughs> there are stairways that went nowhere, and then you have a push on a wall, and the whole thing opens up, and some floors are glass, and you look through, the, you can see down to the bathroom, or you can see through to that room, but you can't see into that room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, you can look from one room into another, but some, some rooms you can't see into. The top floor is one giant bed. And, it, and, and they, I get up there, and they go, one of the girls goes, Jeff, you are gay, no? <laughs> and I said, no. And they ripped my coat off, ripped my jacket off, ripped my tie off. And all of them took their fucking shirts off and started making out with me. How is the pastry? Huh? <laughs> and then, so while that's happening, what, this guy comes up, this guy named Aurelion or something like that. He comes up and he lays down, like fi 15 feet away from us, lays down sideways and smoking a cigarette. And one of the girls in French is like, like Aurelion, do you go to my Africa? Like, 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 you want to come and join? And he goes, no. And just sat there smoking and digging it. <laughs> Wait, he, he, was, he was just... He, he wanted was, to watch. He wanted to watch. So, a couple nights ago, there's this... I, 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 I was telling the story to, to, to some friends of mine. And, because uh, their friend from France was showing up, he's a famous uh, hairdresser named Charlie Lemindu. He does, like, Lady Gaga's hair. and like, He's, like, a super-duper fa famous French hairstylist. And he shows up, and I just told the story. And... Uh, and I said, hey, hey, you know La Perouse? And he goes, he goes yeah, I, I do a night there uh, once a month. I, I, I promote a night there. I go, oh, I was just telling them about this girl. And he goes, was it Amre? I go, yeah. And he goes, yeah, she rapes all the men. <laughs> it, was, it was fucking French. And my car came at, 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 at 8.30. It was fucking French. <laughs> <laughs> I, they, 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 had written, they had written all over me. I had writing all on my arm and on my face and my neck and my shirt. Like, uh, like, like they kept writing on me. Like, this is the back of the pocket square. And I got to the airport, and I was just covered in writing. And, and the French guys at the airport seemed to like, that was just another day at the office for them. Like, <laughs> it, does get, it does get very French in Paris. It does. <laughs> It's we, like these French have got a different word for everything. Uh, we, we were there on, on New Year's Eve, and in this, uh, I had some friends that were that we ran into from New York, and we were in this in this club at like uh, up until 5 a.m. And when we walked in there, we were like, "Oh, cool, cool club!" And it was all red, and the music the music's terrible. Uh, well, I mean, I'm mean, sure not uh, not across the board, but where we were, it was pretty bad. It was like a um, Whatever the, the what it's called when you type it words into a website and then it gives it back to you. <laughs> translation. Yeah, like a translator, but what you want to say, um, like a Stephen Hawking, like like automated. I know there are many uh, like obvious words that are, I'm, I'm forgetting. Anyway, we were in this place where this DJ was typing words into like some sort of like child's toy uh, or or a deaf person's toy and was playing it with like a heavy beat underneath and everyone was really into it. Um, <laughs> Except for the deaf people. Yeah. Ironically, we, even we though were, their their life is a game. Yeah. <laughs> we we uh, we. <laughs> <laughs> This is the one, the one I time. I mean, it's a the... choice. <laughs> uh, but I, we were at the door, and I speak very, I speak very little French. But I was at the door and like spoke enough French to the guy that somehow like we got into this club that was like a private party, and everyone's dancing, and then everyone's making out, and then people are taking people's faces and saying, "No, you make out. No, you make out." Like we're not a part of this. Like we're very obvious. We're, we're we're just watching all of this happen um but every everyone is there's this just this very free energy and at a certain point i was like are we at like a very special free club but i think it's just like a french thing yeah. but the height of it was when a guy came downstairs who looked like um a jolly old elf <laughs> And he had this sack full he of presents. He looked like when you when you watch if you were to watch a seventy a biopic about a very famous hairdresser from the seventies, this would be that guy. He came down wearing a beret, 
Yeah. Which they wear, they do. They really, well, and it was crazy. Like, it just seems so on the nose. They, they actually, they, they do wear berets. They I, wear berets. I actually, I heard one totally non-ironic, ooh la la. I went to McDonald's people... and they said, bon appetit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, ah! They just, they just laughed. Um, wait, wait, I have a question. Why did you go to a fucking McDonald's in Paris? Oh well, because everything was was clo- we 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 went because the kids that Dan met at that bar were talking about it like it was the most amazing restaurant in the world, and I, I, we just, I just thought, I thought it was funny. I did okay. it. As the a kids bet. call it Macdo. Uh, but anyway, this guy, <laughs> the guy's wearing the guy's wearing this beret, and he comes down he comes down into this <laughs> dance floor, and this club this club is called Bonnie and Clyde, and it's in the Pigal, and it's like the cool like hipster club, um, and the the bathroom was crazy. Uh, <laughs> The bathroom is crazy because you like wait in line for the bathroom and you you get to where like it would split off into like men's or women's or, or two stalls or three stalls. There's one stall that has a door and then there's like a trough or a ur- urinal, but it's like right there. So if you're standing in line and a guy just has to pee, like he'll stand there and pee. But the more shocking thing about this, <laughs> it became if you were a man who had to shit, you had to wait for this other thing. And I learned very quick, like I learned a lot of French for, um, I, I am so sorry, I am going to shit before you. <laughs> anyway, this guy comes I down with a beret. take someone's butt and go like, now you shit over here. <laughs> you pee, you pee in his shit. No, it, it, was, it was just weird because like, it, I mean, it, it was weird for a second, but when I say w- weird, I mean it was, it was actually like this, this really like neat human moment where it was like, yeah, we're all in this together. <laughs> Um, like knowing when a man has to ship, but then also the women get to maintain this mystery of like, you don't know what's going to happen in there for me. But like for a man, like it's like, I poop will be coming out of my butt. And that is why I am waiting in this line. And poop will come out of my butt before you do whatever mystery you'll do in there. Anyway, this guy came down. You guys had a very different Paris experience than I had. This guy had a beret and a cape and came to the middle of the dance floor cape. and a cape, a long cape and uh, and not not heels but men's heels, like uh, when you see pictures of of uh, like restoration heels, like French right. restoration heels, like they were clearly men's shoes, but he was wearing heels and just started very sincerely voguing. And I, I, lo- I was looking around and every, no, re- no reaction, no reaction. Um, and it was, am- it was amazing and beautiful. And like, he saw me looking at him and then was like, all right, this is the time when I do this, when I do this for you. And I just sat there while this man vote for me. What, while, while you're waiting to take a shit? No, <laughs> no, this is, this is in the, yeah, this is in the, this is in the, in the okay. dance, the dance room. All right. All right, well. Ah, uh, Paris. Yeah. So, Dan, Dan you, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down on Paris. What do, you, do you like I'm it? I'm not a Paris man, but, uh, you know, I, was, I wasn't a New York man for, uh, for several New York visits, and then Dino showed me the, the, the Dino side of New York, and now I love New York. I, someone will have to, you know, <laughs> Paris is very intimidating to me. It's, it's, it's for, for no, for, I absolutely have no, like, like, like I, I don't funnel my, fear of Paris into me going, oh, Paris is shitty. I think the deal with Paris is, if I could totally make a bunch of sweeping generalizations and speculations, <laughs> is that like even though it's a city that everyone on the planet wants to go to, th- unlike other cities that everyone on the planet wants to go to, they have they've refused to succumb to the tourist industry they they're, they're and the tourist culture like they all know english but they that's where you get that 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 stereotype of like well you have to try speaking french otherwise they don't like you yeah. i th- i finally got that when i was there it's like i i think putting myself in their shoes it was like oh it, suppose you're suppose you're paris and you just want to be new york like like people in new york don't bend over backwards for people that don't speak english uh, 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 yeah like like, like it, in my experience like going to italy people like will throw their arms around you as, as a stranger and some in, 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 also paris is not all of france like south of france is very different than being in paris uh, where people like, like it's it's more provincial and it's less like in Paris people are busy they got shit to do like and also being an American doesn't charm them that's, that, that's not enough on its own for, to be interesting to them they got shit to do I went to go buy a razor because I left my razor in New York 
and I went into a very busy like drugstore, and I found the razor, and I was hoping that I could just walk up, put the razor on the thing, she would type it up, I would see a number, I would overbid on, on, on euros, <laughs> she would give me a lot of change, and that would be the end of it. And she goes, so she, she, she rings it up, I put the money, and she goes, I said, I don't know. And she's like, why, why not? I can, and, and she goes, I can pay you in perfect English. I go, I go, I don't speak French. And she goes like, why? <laughs> and, 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 and I said, I said, I said so I, one phrase I know, I, I said, J'espère qu'en jeu, je parlerai bien le français. Like, one day I hope I can speak French well. And she goes, En jeu? <laughs> like, one day? Like, you're fucking, she's like, you're here now. I go, Lady, give me the fucking razor. <laughs> And, and she fucking died laughing. Like, she loved it. Like, like, they'll give you shit, you can give them shit back. Like, I was like, I just said I hope I go, one day I'll speak French for And she was giving me shit back. Like, they, 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 they're not mean. They just got shit to do. Uh, yeah. And, I, and I, I think that they're, they're, they're quite charming there. Well, I think there's just also, it's a city that people go to to have, like, fantasies and dreams and things. Like, but it's not, like, l like, <laughs> like, 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 like barfing in Versailles. <laughs> Like when you go to Venice, every other building is either a hotel or a purse store. There's, it's obvious that like, like, like there's not obviously tourism is like it's in, it's it's infused the culture. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna roll your eyes at the idea that you have visitors, then you you're an idiot as a Venetian. I think like you the the die is cast for them, and and for Paris they're 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 like look I understand that you're in a waking dream because the Eiffel Tower's over my shoulder, but right. I, I I yeah I got shit to do and I'm not I'm not being a prick to you I'm just saying like when you wander into my 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 bar and you're kind of like you know you you're just in a different mindset as a tourist you're like 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 oh like like you're you're off work you're not working and the it's yeah whatever we've beat this horse dead but it's it, <laughs> it, 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 it there's I think there's just cities that cities that make that choice like they it's a binary thing almost they go like okay I, let's I face it people are coming you. here to visit I could, I could see you liking it because I think that's kind of the the great thing about it because the thing that it, that's a turn off about the touristy stuff obviously is like the selfie stick so you have to buy the selfie stick take the selfie stick yeah. but it's kind of neat to just kind of if I got comfortable and you know it would be it would be yeah several several like visits whatever I th we, we, what, what, we, what I what I was blown away by is I had that box of uh, cake and I went to a, 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 like a, 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 a I, I went to a little cafe and said like near the Eiffel Tower I said I, I asked a waiter is it okay if I eat this here. And uh, he's like, only if you uh, you share with me. Like, 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 everybody wanted in that fucking cake box. And I had two, two, two little This cakes. is the story that blew Jeff away. The story where he went into a sex dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know he didn't that say it, but time travel was Chonet. implied. Uh, <laughs> so I just like that, that the precursor to that, the cake story was, uh, this is what blew me away. This what? is what blew you. You were at the airport and it said like whore on your forehead. Uh, let's, uh, uh, you, you should write a, a, a new like a, a new manual for men to replace the game, which is such a pile of bullshit. Just called the box of cake. <laughs> And, and we can just see men carrying around beautiful boxes of cake. I, I went to the what's the uh, what's the uh, museum where all the um, like the uh, Les Invalides where, where all the uh, Dorsey? Uh, 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 where like Napoleon's tomb is where all the armory and all that shit is. I walked in there and then I went. I had I, I didn't finish all the cake and so I went into the uh, <coughs> the, the, um, the, the, the you sat at Napoleon's grave with the cake I, and Napoleon was like, oh, are you going to share that with me? I, 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 I was in Napoleon's tomb with my half-eaten cake, and then I had the box. And, and then I went, acro I went across the road to the Musée Rodin, and I, I wanted to see the, um, the, the statue of uh, Honoré de Balzac. And, I, and so I, I walk in there, and the, these two security guards come charging at me. And I, I'm assuming they're going to go, you can't, you can't bring food in here. And they're like, um, what is this? And I, and, I, and I opened it up and showed them, and I was, is it okay? And he goes, and they're like, oh, no. one guy's like, no, it's, it's okay. You, you, you can bring food into the thing. And the other guy's like, no, no. You, ha you have to give it to me. <laughs> I was like, you give it to so me? I, I was like, then I, 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 for two euro, you walk in the fucking Musée Rodin gallery and you're out in the fucking garden and there's a fucking Le, Le Penseur, there's the thinker by Rodin. And I'm fucking eating my cake and no one gave a shit. Like, you couldn't bring cake into a museum in the States. It was the best. 
And then girls walk by into smoke and they fucking want to know about that cake. Was this cake made out of diamonds? What, what kind of it, cake? It did. Oh, it's so good. Sorry. See, well, we got, we're, 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 you guys, we keep a tight schedule on this show. <laughs> and we got, we got important shit to talk about with, 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 with uh, Spencer Crittenden. Bring him out. Oh, shit. Hey guys, hey, you know, wouldn't you believe it? I read a fucking article about men carrying cakes in public. <laughs> and it's a great way for men to uh, get the female experience of always having eyes on them, you know? <laughs> because men aren't traditionally stared at by everyone, whereas women are. And it's really hard to kind of fathom that experience of all this constant attention. <laughs> but when a man is holding a cake, <laughs> They get all that attention. Are, are you on PCP really right now? <laughs> no. ah! <laughs> his his mic's just a little a little up, I think. But wait, does this doesn't this imply that all women are Kathy? Uh, 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 no, no. Did you say you read an article? Did you really? Oh read yeah, yeah, I read real? an article. I, I love that. Yeah. Are you being glib or did you really no, read an article? No. Why would Why would I make up an article that I read? Uh, <laughs> no, this lady, she she was like, it's probably really hard for for you know guys to fathom what it's like to always be contemplating you know gazes on you and to how that changes your behavior and just the way you hold yourself and the way you walk. And then her partner just was by chance carrying a cake and noticed that everyone was staring at him and they talked about it and she made this not exactly scientific test where she got guys to carry various uh, baked goods in public mm. and um, like <laughs> a plate of cookies, you know, no, nothing, nothing. Oh. A, 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 an, an exposed cake? Oh boy, look out. <laughs> Like a birthday style cake? Yeah, like on a is stand. It, do you think it's, does the article talk about is the idea because it's uh, because of the psychological ramifications, the mystery behind it, or is it because everyone just wants that cake? Uh, I think that they said it was it was part of that. It was both. It was some people wanted the cake and wanted to make jokes about getting the cake, and other people seemed like they just wanted to wait for someone to drop the oh, cake. So well, a lot like, of times like, when men look at women that they want to fuck, it looks like they want to eat them. Yeah. So that, I mean, so, oh, so also, it's comparable. Do you, I don't know if you guys, Dan, you, you, you don't strike me as a person that buys flowers. 911. <laughs> I, I love the idea of someone walk in, walking in for the first time and being like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 celebrating 911. Dan, Dan actually buys flowers very frequently. But if you if you if you walk down walk, walk down the street like in a, in, a, in a busy like like New York or Seattle like, or a big town walking down the road with with, with flowers in your hand is um, aphrodisiac to everybody like everybody likes or, or it's like people just like oh that that guy thought about something somebody else. I was it was my it was my diet's cheat day uh, yesterday and I went to a Froyo place and I got the <laughs> biggest bucket they had <laughs> and I filled it I filled it a quarter of the way through. And then I put all peanut butter cups, and then I filled it another halfway through, and then I put all peanut butter cups, and a little bit of crushed peanut butter cup, and then I filled it the rest of the way through, and I was just walking through Las Feliz with, a, with, with like it was, it was obvious that I wasn't like taking it to a family. Yeah, it had one spoon in it. Well, and what did the side of it say? It says something like "just for me." Yeah. <laughs> Treating myself today. Yeah, <laughs> special day or something. I, 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 Cheat day. I, 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 I know. It's a novelty. I think it's a, it's a cousin of the concept because of the prop I was carrying. I did feel like all of this extra meaning to every. I wasn't allowed to just be in 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 a in a in a shell as I walked past people. I wasn't allowed to just be anonymous like I had this prop and I and, and so I was a story to any every everybody in every window it was like it was like yeah laugh it up laugh it up you fuckers uh, like, that's you that's know, just what boobs are yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you know how I feel it's like I'm covered in frozen yogurt all the time and candies um, so, like. so, so 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 I say in the Garfield dress so I mean like I, 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 we, 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 
I don't know what's happening to me right now. <laughs> um, the uh, the I, w- I wanted to uh, we 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 were, we've been talking forever about uh, you know the 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 like trying a different game mm-hmm. from my childhood. My my high school days called Shadowrun. Yeah, and uh, and Spencer's been like reading the books and like I've I've seen him outside my uh, writer's room like sitting there reading the Shadowrun books, getting very excited. Uh, and you like like we're not go- we're not we're not gonna p- we're not gonna play it tonight, but we're also not gonna play D and D, and we're we, we'll get hey fuck you people. <laughs> If you if you want to know how it feels to get that kind of reaction, take up tray of cookies and wear them like a necklace, and then maybe you'll start to get it. But they can't be oatmeal because that's it's the most masculine. Yeah. Um, the uh, put 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 a pickle behind your ear like it's a pencil, and you're like a handy Smurf. And then on the other ear, just dangle a piece of pizza. Or wear a sign, wear, wear a sign uh, around your neck that says, I forgot your cookies. <laughs> right, yeah. That, that pencil was way too big to stay tucked behind that guy's ear. It's like a giant ass, it's like a microphone sized pencil behind his ear. But you don't know how stiff Smurf cartilage is. <laughs> it can't be that tough. Like. Can I, can I just point out very quickly that there's a man in the audience uh, whose laugh is identical to Judge Doom's laugh, Chris, Christopher Lloyd's character in Roger Rabbit right after when, he's, when you find out he's a cartoon and he's turning into a cartoon and he like, has that maniacal laugh. Dustin Marshall uh, pointed that out backstage. Who's, how, how's that laugh go? Like that. <laughs> Well, I don't want to do it. That does, that's not what it sounded like, and that sounded like I was making fun of you. But you're, that, like, is that. it a good laugh? You, you, are you enjoying this laugh? Or are, you, are you? I mean, I, I mean, I've gone through. At first, I was like, huh, and then I, and then I was like, oh, and then I was like, oh, neat. Okay, great. We're all. And it's the truth. Yeah. Now I'm like, now I love it. Now it's like being covered in yogurt, but my yogurt for my own in front of a mirror. I'm not walking down the street. I'm in a room of mirrors, and I just am seeing my own yogurt. Yogurt, yogurt's a lot grosser when it's not frozen. Covered in my own sugar-free Greek yogurt. Spencer, do you have other logic uh, problems with the Smurfs besides the size of uh, handy? Yeah, Smurfs? I mean, there's just the one lady Smurf, right? Yeah. And yeah, they, don't Smurf they lay fat. eggs? What? <laughs> okay. But you know the Lady Smurf was created by uh, Gilgamesh. What's his name? That's even more. Yeah, isn't that even? Gargamel. Gargamel. Well, <laughs> Gilgamesh. They took that from Gilgamesh. Well, <laughs> Gilgamesh would have been would be impressive if it was. Did they come out Har- of the mushrooms? She was created by Har- Hammurabi Smurf. <laughs> where do the do they come? Like I don't know. I, where I, do they I, grow? I, I know they're three apples high. <sighs> But, but didn't they also, Are they? What, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're supposed to be three apples tall. Those are giant fucking mushrooms, then. They look like they could be easily crushed underfoot. But three apples, man. Those are huge mushrooms. Well, That's no, like, like a yeah, dog mansion size. You can tell from the Pac-Man cartoon that they definitely ripped off Smurfs. Like, the, uh, they had a Gargamel figure. I can't remember. God, what was his name? Mesmeron? Maybe... <laughs> Are you sure the Pac-Man pa- doesn't the Pac-Man pre- cartoon pre-date? From the oh, the cartoon. I, di- I didn't like that Pac-Man had hands and feet and had gloves on for some reason. He wore, well, what's he, wore- he supposed to do? What, what, what's the cartoon <laughs> supposed to be? I, I'm, I, I'm not talking about a rhetorical question, but what, but what would that cartoon be? Like, he's just floating in space, and he's like, well, I ate one dot. Right, time to eat another one. Like, how do you get 100 episodes out of that? <laughs> Like, what do you do at Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? He, he had to have gloves. You and have like a, a ton of dots. Yeah. I mean, I, I uh, yeah. They, I, they, they weren't just gloves. They were like kind of like gauntlets. Like, yeah, he had yeah. like big fancy gloves. Car- uh, cartoons always seem to be wearing gloves. Yeah. Because hands are, are but hand, are you could scarier. Just, you could just draw the hands. Hands are like nature's like gloves. The glove. Yeah. And then you could not have hand. the little wristy part of the glove, and you'd have a hand. I didn't realize until I, I, we were creating The hand fills a, out the glove shape perfectly. <laughs> That's why it's that shape. 
Sorry, sorry. Oh, I bet I know why. I bet I know why they wear gloves. Maybe because in the old days, like cell animation, like the uh, color, the uh, when you were ha- you, the way you made things move is by putting like transparency on top of transparency. There was always like a color differentiation between things that are moving and things that are static. Uh, yeah, yeah. So making sure that anything that's going to be moving a lot is like a different color than the thing next to it, maybe is like a good idea. Uh, just a thought. So. Right. Right, so if it, of course, because we all grew up on animation. What's but 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 but, but, but but I'm say, you're saying what I'm saying though. Is right? Callie here? Is, is that is that because no, it's a different cell? Because we've all seen those like Scooby Doo cartoons where it's like they're walking by a, a mountain and you're like, gee, I wonder if there's a secret door there because it's like, <laughs> you know, it's gonna move, so it's like different color. Uh, different, just slightly different shade because it's like through the. Did I tell you guys I was I drove with an Uber driver who was like a He Man, the second biggest collector of He Man cells. The second biggest. Second biggest. I love that he knew he was the second. I was like, who's the first? And he knew his name and stuff. I was like, are you, Wait, was he angry? Uh, yeah, I was, I was like, are you, are you guys enemies? He's like, no, no, we are. You know, it's like he's like you're cringer or whatever. Like, um, so, anyways, the uh, I didn't I, I didn't know until we we did Rick and Morty that you have to pick the number of fingers when you do a. Uh, you know, Justin had Justin and I had to sit down, and Justin's like, "Okay, it's time for the finger conversation." <laughs> how many how many fingers are human beings gonna have in the thing? I was like, "Well, fucking five, motherfucker!" And, and, and he's like, "Well, uh, take it easy, there, cowboy." <laughs> what? What? Five fingers runs into money. <laughs> I mean, it's like, 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 like the Simpsons have four fingers, don't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. Anyways, that's it's weird. Twenty five percent more fingers you have to draw. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it adds up. I mean, it's budget, budgetary minded stuff. Yeah. Well, if you, yeah, yeah, I'm not. Uh. Right, so Spencer, Garfield has four. Sp- Spencer, uh, I, I, have you played, uh, have you played Shadowrun before? No. Uh, do you, what do you, what's your impressions off the bat of uh, Shadowrun? It's a great system. <laughs> the sha- I the sh- believe that. The Shadowrun universe is uh, it sure is dan <laughs> we'll be right back squarespace it helps you make your own website <laughs> i'm here to talk about bonobos um <clears throat> It takes place in the in the dark future of mankind. Corporations have taken over the government. Mega corporations. Imagine Dan. that. Uh, the the. But in addition to that, in addition to all that far flung future business, where you know there's all the hacking and the laser swords and the implants and the bionic things, there has been an awakening. An awakening has happened along the way. Yes. In addition to the world going to shit just for regular conventional reasons. Like there was capitalism. an awakening where magic returned. People started deforming, turning into <laughs> trolls and elves and goblins and orcs and things. And, and there's dragons and stuff that are, that, that, like, did I, did I read correctly? That there's a dragon that gave an interview? Yeah, they, yeah, that was, that was Dunkelzon, I think, if I'm pronouncing that right. Dunkelzon. He became the first dragon president. It's my mom's maiden name. It's true. It's Dunkel. It's a good name. Now, Z- Zon means son now, b- before b- before we embark on this, are we saying goodbye to our our our, our D and D campaign for? Don't say goodbye. I'm glad you asked. Say good journey. Oh, sorry. Oh, I no you. What does no, gir- what does good journey mean, Dan? Uh, just a reference to the uh, Dolph Lundgren He Man movie from. <laughs> Doesn't okay. D- Dan's the third biggest collector of He Man. <laughs> If you if you if you actually look at a a, a bird's eye map of uh, of uh, Castle Grayskull, it's identical to Dealey Plaza. <laughs> yeah. So wh- that's a great question, Jeff. I'm glad you asked. Thank I you, don't really, I don't really know the answer to that. Actually. I feel like it's easy enough to put on. I mean, we don't have to set our D and D stuff on fire. That story's not done, obviously. Well, you don't know how I DM then. <laughs> oh. Ooh. It's, uh, it's all all fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, so set it aside <laughs> is the answer to Jeff Davis's question. All right, yeah. Put a pit in it. Do you want me to... Can we introduce some special guests tonight? Yeah. I'd love that. 
for, I mean, I don't know how, how he feels about being pointed out, but uh, the uh, the 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 uh, the guy from Homeland is here. Uh, uh, can, can you can you just co can you come up and just wave to everybody? Remember, he's the he's a is he a is he a, you, is he a president or a terrorist? I, that was a bit. He just looked like the guy from Homeland to me. Good. <laughs> I can't, I can't help you there. I've never seen the show. Well, <laughs> sorry, sorry, that was a that was a misfire, I guess. No, you have to do two more. <laughs> I know there's a young lady, young compared to me, uh, who's uh, it's her thirtieth birthday tonight. Where, 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 somebody tweeted me about their thirtieth birthday. W w are you here? Yeah. <laughs> are you? Do you? Do you? Do you want to? Do you want to be looked at? Oh God. Do you do you want to come up here and be be like a up? piece of cake? <laughs> What's you, your name? You can say no, by the way. But no Laura. Uh, no, Laura. Okay, you're coming up. Okay, Laura, everybody. All right. Dan, Dan, have I told you my fix on that song? Uh, I, I have a fix on the happy birthday song. You go, happy birthday to you. That's it. <laughs> You're done. Know. You go, happy birthday to you. That's, then, 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 oh, you yeah. then you can fucking move along. Hello, Laura. Uh, Laura, are you a big Lakers fan? No, I... <laughs> Laura is wearing a purple sweater and a My, my uh, sister skirt. actually pointed that out, that oh, yeah? I look like a Lakers fan, but no, I, I don't like sports, so. Are you I, from L.A.? I'm from Chicago. And you, you pilgrimage down here? Uh, up here? Down here. Okay. Over. Uh, 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 were you, you didn't just come for Harmontown, right? You, you, you had, you know, you had Hollywood signs to look at stuff. My sister lives here, too, so, but, but yeah. So, and to look at Aaron's skirt, because it's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Are you uh, are you scared to be uh, old now? <laughs> you're thirty. You look you look like you're nineteen. Ah. Right? Thirty's Thank the you. new nineteen. <laughs> I think you go through a process when you're getting to that age, and you kind of go through it when you're like, oh shit, I'm twenty nine. Oh no, and you you know get over I it. I just turned thirty. Yeah. Three weeks ago. Four weeks ago. Yep. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. We have the best audience of all time tonight, by the way. These fuckers are up for anything. <laughs> is there is there a wish that we could we could help you with? Oh no. Um, <laughs> um I've got a funny uh, uh thing to tell if someone is um like <laughs> looking. <laughs> uh uh is 25 years or younger? I'm that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, who is John Bobbitt? Oh, let me tell you about John Bobbitt. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yes, it works. It works. Oh, really? Do you know is who that John, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know, know who John Bobbitt is? Yeah, yeah. 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 Lorena Great. Bobbitt? The guy, the guy that I... <laughs> the, the guy that got us... Am I going to learn when I'm 25? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be taken to the woods and... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you who John Bobbitt is to me. He's the he's the uh, the most guaranteed comedy sports suggestion oh <laughs> from, from from during the uh, three year period. Is that the guy that the guy that had his penis cut off by his wife? Oh, it's right? horrible! Yeah. It's horrible. The, a few years ago, he did a porn. Ugh. So everything's fine. He got his penis reconstructed. <laughs> did he do that twenty five years ago? No, it's just a, a funny thing that a friend of mine pointed out that anyone under like 25 does not know that story that's fascinating i want to know why well what happened 20 like when it's when no what's the time people frame? aren't talking about it yeah, yeah i know but when why why aren't they <laughs> when were they because when you were when, when it happened you were too young for your yeah. parents to tell no, you about a guy whose dick when got cut did off. it happen <laughs> oh it happened like uh early oh 98 no, no, good year that. So, so 94 someone knows it and, and why why was it notable yeah 
it was just, it was just like a like a bit like a highly publicized like true crime type. I've thing. read it's the like same reason six why or seven stories about crazy mishaps involving penis severings. I mean, <laughs> uh, I well, it wasn't a I mishap. Ju- it she followed through. I, it it sounds like a mishap. <laughs> I, I, I heard about a woman. I, I don't know where I heard this. Maybe this is a thing that everyone knows about, or maybe something that just happened to someone that I like a friend of a friend. Some a, a guy the, the woman didn't like him. She was mad at him, and she super glued his dick to his stomach. <laughs> I think, I think that was dialogue from Reservoir Dogs, wasn't it? That's what you're thinking of? Uh, that, I, I don't know. Isn't that Harvey Keitel told the story? I, well, it's, it, that's a very interesting concept, though, that you could stand, that you could pick a random thing, or not a random thing, a very decided thing, because that's the thing you're looking for, that there's a... Uh, there, there's a there's a momentum to pop cultural zeitgeist and the John Wayne Bobbitt thing, like the foam of that surf, like stops just before the toes of yeah. someone at a certain age. I think that's very interesting. Do you know about uh, Nancy Kerrigan and Tony Harden? Oh, let me tell you about Nancy Kerrigan. <laughs> Wait, was that figure skating? Yeah. 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 I, I my my roommate watched a documentary about that that I was listening to. <laughs> It's back in the news, but had you heard about it before the uh, documentary thing? When I when I heard the incident, I was like, "Oh shit, this was big." When I was like seven or something, like I, I definitely heard echoes of it. But yeah, I don't I don't really yeah. Doesn't it seem a little bit like and maybe this is an illusion of we're in between them? Like I remember and the last one I can remember is like Octo Mom. Like every there's like when there's when there's this thing that has no stakes to global society at all, but it's just like everyone's talking about it because it's just like when you focus in on it, it's it's everyone who just wants to talk about Octomom. Um, the the like it seems like we've been we've been in this reverse oasis of uh, or sandbar of like uh, like are those days over? Because I, like, I think no. you might just be working too hard. I mean there there are a lot of, I'm not doing it bad. I mean there there are a, a ton of like uh, true crime things that are constantly in the news. There, Casey Anthony was was pretty I don't recent think Octomom's and, a yeah. true crime thing though. <laughs> <laughs> well she she was like I don't know well she I guess it that was counts. Like a legal I mean it's, it's, like it's, it's a, I mean it does, it does count because it's like relative to what should be important to anybody. It is one human life and it shouldn't it's a, it's like yeah our decision to focus in on it. Yeah, Casey Anthony was a thing. I guess those just pop up once in a while it just feels like we've been through this patch right now it's just fucking like darkness darkness dark oh, like, like oh, I see just saying. this river sticks of like like oh there's bill cosby's head floating i can recognize that but <laughs> like 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 everything is just moreover just kind of like real like everything's kind of real right well and i didn't want to imply that the casey anthony story was fun no 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 <laughs> it's not fun it's not, like, not hard to, but, but but no there's bigger fish to fry than 350 million people focused on one verdict of one case to be sure so those there's like these things that pop up I was just wondering it seemed like in the but I think that's how you remember time like if I look back through the 80s I'll remember like all of those things these little maypoles that we danced around and I won't remember like the lava flow of actual society stuff just also like turns over so much more quickly than it used to right now it's just like I think with every with every passing day it's like I don't know where the tipping points are or where they've been but it just it's like it seems like I almost want to like you they're, they're gonna invent some phrase for it now where you can't even exist as a as an entertainment like kind of person like you you have to make a decision in your life whether you're going to dip a toe in that river or not like you have to have a relationship with it because it's like there's just too much available reality now you can't you can't like there's there's a camera on everything everything is documented all of the all of the goo is seeping up it's all available to us I could I could I could tweet like like hey everybody like like co- co- we're go- we're gonna have a sock hop tomorrow night let's have let's let's we're gonna have a good old sock hop S- sock uh, hop and I know that somebody out of three hundred fifty thousand people that are like 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 looking at that I know that someone is gonna go that's a that's a little bit of a bummer considering that someone got strangled by socks yesterday like. <laughs> Or the or, or that or that you know socks like hashtag sock slaughter like 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 like, like you know and I'll, I'll do a little googling and I'll be like you know what come to think of it my relationship with the word sock does need to change like I fucked up um, it's it and I, I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not being that 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 guy that's going like like give me a break let me say what I want I'm not, I'm saying and I'm saying like You're the just world saying that is Irish people are dirty little people <laughs> they're dirty little potato people. Yeah. 
I'm gonna get one of those. I'm gonna get one of those mouth swabs and mail it in so I can. I can. I, I hope I'm one of them. I hope I'm one of those dirty potato people. <laughs> What, 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 what is your, hair, your your lineage? I don't know. I gotta find out. You don't know. I want to be a dirty potato person. Let's do it. I'll I'll get us I'll get us some some tests. swabs. The, the, my, my, mine's mine's pretty clear. I'll get you a swab. Yeah. What do you What do you think you are? You must know something. I feel like I must be pretty Irish, but and then and then, and then beyond that, pretty Polish. What if you found out that you were straight up one hundred percent Parisian? <laughs> Like the, te- the you get a letter from the company and they're like, uh, Mr. Harmon, uh, no, no, a knock on the door, uh, sir. We we've never done this before, but we've never gotten a test back that's so conclusive. You are from this yes. cafe. It's they printed. <laughs> Your father is Victor Hugo. <laughs> Let's. Uh, uh, what, I I, for, I forgot the birthday girl's name. Laura. 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 <laughs> Laura. Let's. Uh, let's. Uh, let's. Let's. Uh, Let's do that thing that we do for everyone's birthday. Uh, Happy birthday. Give me some vodka. Oh. oh. Yay. Yay. <laughs> that a girl. She should ask, pour, pour the gala drink. Woo. Laura, uh, we, we asked you, uh, do you have any wish, wish fulfillment? Wait, 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 do you, do you um, want to live in Los Angeles? Well, you just, you're visiting here? Or? Just visiting. Yeah. You want, you want to stay in Chicago? Uh, yeah, I work for a nonprofit there, so I'm having a good what, time. What do you do? I uh, teach English as a second language, and I help immigrants and refugees adjust to life in Chicago. Wow! Oh, is Ooh. there is there any? Uh, really Don't coddle her. <laughs> <laughs> Don't enable her. Uh, <laughs> there's too many people speaking English as a second language. I feel like you're cheating. Where does it stop? The, Pretty soon it'll be taught as a third language. <laughs> I feel like you're cheating at the, oh God, am I doing something that really matters at 30 game? <laughs> I don't get paid very much if that makes anyone feel better, so. <laughs> um, all right, well, happy birthday, Laura. Let's, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm bad at... Uh, uh, I, at per tradition, as you walk back to your seat, Dan is going to list every major event that's happened in the last 30 years. Right. Also, spanking machine. Thank you. Which is, <laughs> which, is uh, all, all, which we call Jeff's apartment. Uh, <laughs> all right, yeah, for each of the 30 steps back to your seat, I will, I will recount a, the world in pictures. <laughs> Thank Laura, you, everybody. Is, Thank you, Laura. Yeah. Thanks for coming Thank out. Thank you. Uh, this is the best birthday gift. 1985. Bill Clinton is 1987. 1988. Bill Clinton is 1999. Bill Clinton is Bill Clinton. <laughs> Bill Clinton. She walked so fast. It's yeah, just yeah. a blur of Bill Clinton. <laughs> That's all I remember. Did you say Bill Clinton is 1999? Yeah. <laughs> That's probably me, too. All right, so Spencer, shadow run. Lay it on us. Uh, w- <laughs> You guys are great at segues. Well, what we have to talk about is what kind of characters we would like to play. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's there's a way. You, you guys got to make the characters. So, uh, in, in general, there's kind of five roles. Um, the, the roles are kind of like classes, but they're not really. There's not strictly classes in Shadowrun. So, the, f- the first role is the face. You know, he's the guy. He's like Jeff Davis. Um, he knows people, and he tells stories, and he talks, and, you know, he's that guy. He knows, you know. That's a role? Yeah. It's, you, 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 whenever, whenever there's a crew of people in a movie, in a caper movie, they go to a guy who knows some people. Oh, he's the face man. That's the face, okay. yeah, exactly. Well, me, uh, yeah, because, because the word, the, the title of the game, Shadowrun, comes from the idea that, that in the future, there's the corporations control like uh, the world, the mega corporations, they can have their own armies and they have their own law and the world's just kind of a mishmash of, of uh, craziness and alliances and, and stuff. And there's, and there's these mercenaries that, that uh, dwell in the shadows that can, you know, if you, if you need something done and you can't do it through legitimate channels. They're like the A-Team. You go, you go to these people, so, so, shadow so, runners. Uh, Face Man's an actual character from A-Team. Is, is there a... It's all. It's like they. Can I be B. A. B. B. A. Baracus? Yeah, you can. He's a troll. Is he? In in Shadow Run, he's a troll. Yeah. I don't make the rules. Yeah. Okay. So what else? Uh, you got the face man. You got the troll. You, you <laughs> no trolls are a race, Jeff. You said there were no races. Classes. 
Yeah, there's no classes. Okay, so the classes are what? Sorry. Okay. There's the face. After the face, there's what I, I hate to refer to as the street samurai. That's a sem- essentially a guy who owns weapons. Um, yeah. They're, they're the muscle, you know? Sometimes they got rocket launchers. Sometimes they just got swords and sticks and shit, but... They use them for tasks. Street samurai? Street samurai. So they're, they're, they're fighters with weapons. Yeah. Okay. Then you got, uh, you got the Decker. That's your hacker. Um, that's kind of like the, the whole thing about the future is instead of the internet, they got the Matrix. And the Matrix is like this virtual overlaid world. So like if I was looking in the Matrix, I'd see like a virtual... Uh, mic stand and like a virtual table and then it would be all like this is a mic stand made by Sony Corp and you know it's all virtual reality sort of thing and then the Deckers they they hack that shit they have these little portable computers that can do illegal stuff and they can steal money and you know do do hacking things gotcha like hackers would I don't know they could disable your cyber eyes or something you know (laughs) my cyber eyes yeah if you have them that's you a can, make of car and Shadowrun. You can get cyber eyes. Lots in this of people game. have like implants, bionic implants. Yeah. Okay. So we got we got the the face, the, the street samurai, the decker. Who the else? decker. Then you got your rigger. A rigger is like a hacker, but they work with uh, vehicles and machines. Because in this far flung hu- uh, future, people don't really know how to drive. Everything just kind of drives automatically using this thing called grid guide, which is essentially like uh, if you had to do what Waze told you to. <laughs> So um, it's just like that. And so no one knows how to drive unless you, like, spent time learning how to drive. And then the advanced people are riggers where they can actually jump into the, into the Internet and control vehicles from the inside, like, like go in and be the vehicle. And they also control drones, which are robots and stuff. So that's the rigger. Then you got your magic users, which are broken up into uh, your shamans and your sorcerers, as well as your adepts. And shamans are like, uh, you know, they, they pray to spirits, and that's where they get their magic. And uh, sorcerers, they're just wizards and shit. And then adepts are like, they're like people that are really good at stuff in a magical way. So like, uh, if, you were, if you could punch through a wall, that would be because you're like magically strong, but you couldn't like shoot fireballs and stuff. Mm. <laughs> that's five, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can you? I have some more questions about the adepts. Yep. Like, uh, so, so, are you a certain kind of adept? Would you be like, I am like a muscly adept that punches through walls? Or? Yeah. Like, there could be an adept who's like a master with a swordsman. So, like, if you think of a swordsman who could like slice a grasshopper in half with his eyes closed, that would be like an almost <laughs> magical level of skill. Or if someone could like be so good at card games or shooting guns or something, <laughs> that it really, you know. So, is it like shape shifting without shape shifting? Are you like absorb? Like, you get to absorb. Like, you know, it's like it's like Neo in the Matrix, I would say. I I tried, Adam. I tried. I got one. I did one. I said one thing that wasn't dumb. I tried to to help you. Anyway, yeah, no, Adams. <laughs> Like, adepts are like, there's a guy, you know, he's maybe an assassin, and he's got magical abilities that augment his assassinship. Ooh. Okay, I see. But maybe there's a better, because the, the, the uh, like, the, the, there's probably a permutation of, uh, of, of, of the class system that allows for just about any kind of character you would want to be. So it kind of begs the question, like, what, you know... Yeah, so knowing what little I've told you about the setting, if you had a character concept, that'd be a great place to start. So, like, if I was if I was in the world of Shadowrun, I'd be, like, the well-mannered nerd who knows enough but not enough to save his own ass. <laughs> or, you know, like, something like that. You start... <laughs> So we have to size ourselves up? Yeah, you start with like a a tagline as your character concept, yeah. You know? Jim Night Blade. (laughs) That's a character concept. (laughs) It happened. I uh, I, I wish you were 15-year-old. You were a big fan of that movie, Lucy, I remember. Uh, Uh, That's my favorite movie ever. That movie's (laughs) the the dumbest piece of shit ever. It was so... uh, but so exhilarating. It was so, uh, it was right. so About dumb. ten, ten so minutes good. before the end of that movie, Aaron said, God damn it, why does this movie have to be ending? <laughs> I, was, I don't know the last time that I felt that. Um, 
<laughs> you wanted Scarlett Johansson to keep turning into I just wanted them to start improvising. Goo. Yeah, like her go through the ground and then the earth. She starts juggling the solar system and, and then how, eating it and then but then not qu- being quickly able to, in that movie like uh, like no like rules. they make the big deal in that movie which is uh, like uh, Asian guys with guns, like a totally no stakes deal. Like, like, like it's about tw- about twenty percent of her brain. She can just make everyone in the world fall down, right? Yeah. And then, yeah. like, for another hour and a half after that, it's like, now what's she gonna do? And can she? Well, she can you can always make everything. everyone fall down, like, like <laughs> that thing you do where you just kill the planet. And then teleport. And then, uh, uh, Aaron, Aaron was saying, is it, is this movie gonna end with uh, uh, her like taking the sun? out of the sky and throwing it at a guy's head. <laughs> yeah, Lucy, you should check it out. So, uh, so Spencer, really so. Uh, so the, the, the job of these shadow runners is, is to, like, they're, they're kind of like guns for hire. They're the people that like... Yeah, they do illegal stuff. The whole thing is, okay, there is this incident that happened where the Native Americans, um, they formed their own state and they stole nuclear warheads and they're holding the whole world hostage. And as a kind of a result of that... Uh, Spencer, really Too quick. soon. Really quick, when Spencer sent this email today explaining all of this, and then I, asked, I had some questions about like the attitudes towards the other races, and in the email you see, you said, "Well, you know, like everybody hates Native Americans," and I thought that is not you, that is not I the diction I use. day that like your understanding of the world is that everyone hates Native Americans, I, and I was like, "Holy shit!" And I just like let it go, but this is within the world. That, that is not the diction I, I use. I, I feel like Native Americans have been getting a free ride in this country for too long. <laughs> No, that's not. That's not what he. No, he didn't say anything. But I thought I didn't use those words exactly. No, no, no. Everyone in the world of Shadowrun is uh, is racist against Indians because you know they 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 took the world hostage with nuclear weapons. Okay. And, and what, uh, like terrorists. I'm not familiar with that. Did that resolve? Did the, the yeah? You know, they shot missiles, but the missiles didn't uh, didn't didn't get to where they were going. No one knows why. Oh. So then, as a result of that, the, uh, the, the governments of the various nations were like, shit, man, you companies, you need to be able to protect yourselves. And so they started hiring private armies. And then they got this thing called extraterritorial status, which basically meant that corporations uh, set the rules instead of the governments. And then they formed their own government called the corporate court. So as of that, all the corporations started rewriting the rules and started getting all the money and started making everyone kind of into this you know these dystopian wage slaves so when everyone is uh, is kind of just slaves to corporations and corporations only have to play by the rules that they set when they don't want to play within those rules they hire shadow runs or shadow runners to do stuff like uh, murder politicians or steal high-tech shoes <laughs> those are gonna be your first two missions <laughs> Yeah, like a shadow run is one of these covert operations, and shadow runners are basically mercenaries. Okay. Yeah. So you yeah. have a job or no, it's I like mean, we're you like might. we well, moonlight as shadow runners. Well, in the, the thing is, in in the world, you need this thing called an SIN. That's essentially like a credit card number that everyone has. Well, it's like a credit card and a social security number. It's what the governments use to track you. But shadow runners don't have those, so they can kind of live outside of the world or outside of the law. But as a result, they can't actually have jobs in the normal way. So the only way they make their living is with crime and with doing these runs. Uh, if, if you are you're outed as a shadow runner, are you are you imprisoned? Like, is it illegal to, to be one? Uh, it is illegal to be one, but that's why they always use false IDs. So you'll probably be running with three or four false IDs. So if someone's like, "Oh, that's Kyle Robertson," where you're like, "I'm James Jamerson now." <laughs> So name. it is illegal, but they they have ways around it. Oh, you know who would be helpful uh, 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 in this is Demarge Brown. Is Demarge yeah. Brown here? Demarge. Demarge, are you here? There. there is a really big Demarge Brown fan over there. <laughs> Hopefully not too big. I thought if we're gonna if we're gonna make character, are you gonna be here next week? Uh, you don't have. I'm to scrolling be. through my schedule right now. Yes. Well, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yes. 
I just wanted to get some, get some, get the pudding stirred here a little bit. We're we're making we're making we're making characters. Now, do we have to decide right now, or should we should we sleep on this and go home? Uh, should I do some more research and think about this more, or should I fire from the hip and pick a character? I mean, I don't care. Well, we're, I think we're, we're talking I think it for, out. Right? For the presentation of it, maybe we should come up with character ideas, and then if you change your mind, we could go from there. Just for the audience. Like what you're saying when you're describing those five roles what you mean by that is 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 like that those know, are kind of skill sets in order for there to be a successful like kind of typical mission like you kind of want those points covered or like, at least a couple of them right yeah. so so that, what, what, what is the face man again like he, he's the guy that you go to for what he he just knows people so if it's all if it's like oh i need to be smuggled into the sewers of borneo he you know maybe a, a guy box. knows that yeah, he has a cake box. Maybe he knows, maybe he, he has a guy who's high up in the business. So if you need to get some business intel, he knows what's going on at the Shiawase Corp, for instance. So he's like Huggy Bear and Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> All right, thank you, DeMarge. <laughs> he's like that thing that he said. DeMarge, your hair has become tremendous as well. Yeah, uh, yeah you have the Dan Harmon beard of hair right I think it's all... It's <laughs> <laughs> Just letting it fly, man. It's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> is it easy to maintain? How, how is that? I just let it sit there. <laughs> <laughs> and when it needs to be reordered, I pull it all out, and, and it, it curls back in on itself over the course of a month. I like it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm going to be the face man of the group. That's that seems that, pretty that's obvious, obvious to me. Well, that's obvious. I thought that would get you know, a bigger, I, I, bigger I've laugh. never I've never been a magic user, so I'm, I'm tempted to be a magic user because I've never done it. All right, so do you want to be a, a shaman or a sorcerer? Shamans kind of, they revere spirits, whereas sorcerers are like, this is a science to use magic. They, they, they function. Who wants me to be a shaman? Yeah. Who wants me to be a sorcerer? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be a rigger. Who? No. Oh, fuck it, I'm a sorcerer, Spencer, I'm a sorcerer. All right. So what, Who, what? Who's confused about the vehemence of the opinions? <laughs> Oh, nobody, nobody, okay. <laughs> but also there's race, so there's dwarf and human. I want to be a black sorcerer. Okay. <laughs> or, a, or a dirty Irish potato sorcerer. <laughs> I mean, so there's human and orc and troll and oh, elf and dwarf. <laughs> um, there's black too. <laughs> uh, I, I imagine an elf sorcerer would be pretty good at being a sorcerer, right? Yeah. Who wants me to be an elf sorcerer? <laughs> Who has no opinion? <laughs> I'm a decker. We should, uh, Spencer, could you, uh, as, a, as a GM, could you give some advice on like how, what would be, what would make us happiest as individuals when choosing um, yeah. what we are? Like, should we? Should are we you be saying what, what character would you like to kill off less quickly than your other character? All right. <laughs> Uh, what, uh, like, should we be choosing characters that fit, I don't know, like, your opinion, obviously there's no, there's not well, a, like, right like, or wrong. I mean, if you think about a character in, like, a TV show, it's like, that could be summed up in, like, a thing, and then a character like that might be appealing to you. So it's like, oh, she's the bubbly girl next door. Like, well, that it, could be, like, a kind of concept. So whatever appeals to you as a concept of a character you might want to play, even in Independent of abilities and stuff. That's, and do you that's what think, I'd do you have an opinion about whether people are most, I mean, like, because there's two philosophies. One is you play a person who, like, you could never be in real life, and then the other is to, like, kind of play a mythologized version of what you are in real life. Yeah. And they're both valid, like, for role playing, but, like, do you, do you, what do you, what do you do when you play? I play as little girls, man. <laughs> really? Oh, uh, yeah. Perfect. Uh, too soon. No, I play as I play as uh, characters. I exclusively play as characters that are skinny. Well, okay, so so but do, do I'd you, recommend that. Do you play? They can you, jump higher. Do you play as? <laughs> but I mean, like, like as far as personality goes, do your characters tend to be more? Like what uh, you want to be, or what you aren't, or what you dare I like not be. Or that what? let me uh, utilize intelligence. You know, like uh, yeah. Nobody mean as far as the your relationship to that character. What kind? What, I, what should I do? <laughs> so I'm saying like, 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a, a, fa- a decision for myself right now, only because I think this will be fun. I want to be a 15-year-old girl who is an elf sorcerer. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I want to be like, like, a, like, a, like a, a, a young high school girl like, age. Well, Aaron, like, kind of like, like a disenfranchised, dis- like disaffected, like little punk rock chick. Great. Well, well finally, teenage girls have a voice. See <laughs> <laughs> what? When when we're playing, I mean, what do you tend to find yourself doing? You know, like you 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 certainly cra- uh, craft a lot of things. Like you <laughs> you like to find. Uh, <laughs> you like yeah. To- well, I'm 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 torn. Uh, Adam, what? I think you might enjoy playing a decker slash rigger because there's a lot of go with it and make stuff up in hacking. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that too. Like see, oh, like oh, taking the existing you. world. I, I would agree with that. Like like like. Okay. Oh, could I make that car do this? Or yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, I mean, I mean, part of, part of me really wants to play like so, like something that I'm not that I would really like to be like like a really short, strong immigrant man. Um, <laughs> I did not expect that to get a laugh. I feel like that's obvious that like deep down inside. It's, like, just, it's just funny how convicted um, you are. <laughs> There's a lot of phrases that are funny when you just say them. <laughs> uh, but then obviously like where, what where I, I really you, like where, crafting where, things and coming up with different should, things. So maybe you should start with the name first. Oh. What, 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 like country, what, what country did you immigrate from? <laughs> Oh, just like a like em- emigrate a, from uh, uh, an, an Eastern European country. Well, good news. Most of the Eastern European c- countries have been buried by radioactive sludge, <laughs> so there's great reason to emigrate from them. <laughs> emigrate is a, a 21st century form of immigration, where you you, you send yourself to a, to a computer. What I, what I I think I like within the game, the f- things that I enjoy the most are like. Pr- my character like pretending to be something or trying to talk to people. I guess I don't know. I just like talking to people about how That's they like, feel. That could be so. Like which the, of the- that could be like the the face man? You know, you'll you'll oh, really? you'll stroll okay. up to the security guard and be all like, "Hey man, I'm here on an inspection." Uh, and then you'll roll some dice and maybe he'll believe it. So that's always my favorite part of the adventure is when Aaron is uh, in charge of... (laughs) Go ahead, Aaron. Go talk to the guy. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. So, so you're just yeah. I mean, well that yeah, that would probably be a disaster. Everyone would be really mad. I uh, hey, it, <laughs> entertainment is a disaster. Uh, no, um, I, it's what you enjoy. Okay, well I enjoy. I like talking to the other characters. I also like magic. Can I be a magic face? Uh, yeah, I mean, there like we were talking about adepts. There's like an adept face might be like a guy who or a girl who's like so charismatic and beautiful that it's beyond you know, the normal world. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> I think we have a winner. That's a yes. That is a yes. <laughs> I mean, like people are like, I mean, how did that happen? I mean, look at that face. <gasps> yes. That, yes, I would. Yeah, yes, I would like that. I uh, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Harmon, what, what do you want to be? Uh, I'm. A, uh, uh, I'm. A, uh, yeah. I'm. Uh, well, I'm just gonna go. I'll just go with my my old like when I played Shadowrun the first time. Like I, uh, you know, if his name is Jim Nightblade, that's fine. Oh, the return of Jim Nightblade. Like I like a. I guess he'd be a street samurai category because it just it's just more like an assassin kind yeah, of. Yeah, he'd probably just have a lot of gear and stuff. Yeah, like a like like specialty in uh, stealth and like uh, kill kill you know killing and, killing. Yeah. Yeah. Quiet. Five o'clock shadow. Uh, uh, very, very sexy. Obviously, uh, uh, but yeah, but, I'm like, not totally f- unintentionally. Yeah, I'm not gonna physically describe them. So. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll get there. <laughs> like, uh, kind of ripped. And uh, you have, you have like old doodles of Jim Nightblade in your journal yeah, I'll that give a, I will put up immediately. <laughs> <laughs> that is a promise. If I find a doodle. Very, very, uh, yeah, world, world weary. Uh, uh, just I'm not gonna a, design, write down any of those things. <laughs> That'll be like your duty to bring to the character, you know. Yeah, I'm just yeah. gonna write down like six, four, thirteen, you know, numbers and shit. 
What's what's left, Demorge? It's you can't be black. <laughs> oh, can I be? Uh, could I be? Uh, is there some sort of cross between a street samurai and then uh, almost like a hagiograph, like a, a person that mo- read, can read a mood, can shift with the mood as the situation changes? Or can sense a mood change in a situation before it gets there? Like he's highly perceptive? Or empathetic? Yeah. Uh, yes? And if, there were, if, there was a, if, we, if we were going from A to B, and in between that there were several different types of people to encounter, or maybe, is there somebody who would be like, uh, since they can't have jobs, <laughs> that they would have? <laughs> we said you can't be black. I'm not even. I don't get it. I'm standing perfectly still for the people who can't read this at home. Uh, is there, you know how characters in that world sometimes they're, they have these underground jobs, like they're the greeter at a hotel or they're a greeter at a, like a casino, it's an underground casino or something, but they have all this other information. So for people in that world, they have one face. For people in the know, they do something completely different. And they always have this sort of broad personality at the, uh, for the people in the regular world. Just sort of, hello, hi, how are you? That kind of thing. And then out, the, out of the other side of their mouth, they're whispering vital information. People are doing something else. Is that? So they're like, well, red? <laughs> I don't. Uh, at, the, at the street level, maybe. Is that, is, that uh, a, is, that a, is that a charisma thing? or a? Well, I mean, it sounds What about like a street samurai that, could, that can kind of... Uh, Convince other people that can change form in front of other people. Change form. Talk about like the newspaper yeah. guy from uh, Men in Black. Uh, I'm a street samurai. Yeah, that's yeah. a yeah. I mean, what you're yeah, that's a thing. Definitely, it sounds like what you're describing is just a guy who has this like a personality pre- a precog trait. that can walk around. Like a what? Like a precog that can walk oh. around. Oh. Uh. I don't know if there's anything like that quite. There's not really psychic abilities so much as magic. Okay. Sorry. So sorry. just a street samurai. That's All it. right. I'll be an everyman. We got to figure out your guys' races. <laughs> oh. What, what race do you want to be, Demorge? I want to be Norwegian. <laughs> and my name is Hortegard. So, like, there's humans and dwarves and elves. <laughs> and then there's orcs and there's trolls. And any one of those can be from Norway. The second one. There's dwarves? Uh, I'm a dwarf, yes. Okay. Yeah. A Norwegian dwarf. I once had a dwarf. <laughs> He's an elf. A dwarfling. What about Dan and Aaron? Um, I want to be f- uh, from British Columbia. Okay. <laughs> and um, I uh, I want my name to be um, Mercy O'Donnell. <laughs> and I want my race to be. I think I think human. Okay. Mercy O'Donnell, the human from British Columbia, with the face that you've never seen. <laughs> it looks like a picture of the galaxy, and you're like, how did they take that picture? But it's a human. It doesn't actually look like the galaxy, but your relationship with it is like is like you're looking at the heavens. <laughs> I am very excited. About this. Very, yeah. uh, I'll, 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 I'd like to be human. All right. And I, I'm going to be a, a 15-year-old girl named Juna who's an elf sorcerer. All right. I think we got, got, got everything settled then. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's good. So do we have a show next week? I also, also, my, I my, my, character wear, my character wears Converse. <laughs> is there a what, show what next Earth week? What Earth race are you? No. Yeah, there is a show next week. No. I'm oh hearing. my god. The fuck? Good confi- no. Okay. I guess no there's show? not a show in two weeks. Sorry, yeah, we're getting a rocky start coming back from the new year, so there's no show next week, but uh, then, then there's one uh, 
won the won the week after that. How about that for for? Uh, so what what, what, do, what do we have to do between now and uh, the next show, Spencer, in terms of character? Do we have to roll stats and stuff like that? No, I'll take care of all that. Just think about the characters you want to create and their backgrounds and what they their interests might be, you know, stuff like that. Now, you're like a super magic guy, so you probably don't want a lot of, like, robot parts. Girl. But, yeah, girl. <laughs> but the rest, of you, the rest of you guys think about maybe also what kind of robot parts you want. Like, maybe if you want, Do we like, have a, to have robot parts? a metal spleen. <laughs> no, no, you don't what have to. What is that to. based on? Like, what, how are we making that decision? Why would we want a metal spleen? Because it's the future, man. You can have laser eyes and shit. I don't know. It's, that's part of it. If you want to have a robot arm that has, like, a... Like a laser eye in it. <laughs> if you want, like an eye that shoots lasers, so, so I, I, I like can't, a drinking I, fountain in your thumb, or I can't yeah. be ro- I can't be robotic because I'm a magic user. Yeah, fucks up your magics. Ah, uh, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love this. So think about those things, and I'll I'll, I'll work on making the characters. You know, backgrounds, your histories, uh, what what you do on Thursday evenings. <laughs> Stuff like that. I what, eat what, lingonberries. <laughs> what, 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 is, like what, is, what does Jim Nightblade do on a Thursday evening? <laughs> he, just, like, he just looks out at the uh, futuristic cityscape and uh, uh, wonders uh, uh, how it got to this. <laughs> oh. Over, over, over a vial of blue liquid. Are we, are we returning in two weeks with a presentation or poetry about our characters? Or you, you uh, have to, you have to write a theme song. That's not up to me. Yeah, no, that would be great. Like, like, like we should, we should do like old school, like, like, like mazes and monsters. You have to like introduce your character. <laughs> like, okay. I, I am Haryana of the. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll two do it. minute presentation. Any medium we would we would like, except PowerPoint. Except I, PowerPoint. I also feel like structurally. Ooh. We have a slide projector. I hate PowerPoint. We. So it, it, <laughs> <laughs> is the is the gameplay the same as D and D? Like the, I mean, the, for you guys, it probably will be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be pretty familiar. Uh, I, I would like on our side. I will take the step toward like improving things by. I'm gonna. I think we'll try to do is move the gameplay session into the middle of the show, so that we're not always like rip roaring drunk, and it's not like the thing that we save for the end. It's like it's like a thing we do at the goddess point of the story, and not the uh, not the end. So that we can, yeah, I don't know, just a thought. All right. That way, that way, it'll maybe we'll get a, it'll it'll have a little more consistency. I'm always so fucking drunk by the, by the time we play D and D. Like I, I never remember anything. Dan, would it would it be okay if we did, and when I say we, I mean me. Would it would it be okay if I, if we, because I don't want to speak for everybody, but like if we did maybe have a presentation in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> with the, of our characters, would that be yeah, okay? Yeah, that's fine. And also, it's a visual medium now, so any any incentive to yeah, if you have a I know hat, some dancers. If you have a hat or something that that you yeah, put on when you play the character, then uh, that's that's all, all the right. more reason to. I see uh, Jane is here. Brought Earthshine. Uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad I didn't. I, I've been that. drinking the absinthe, and I'm high as a Georgia <laughs> pine over here. <laughs> Pine eleven. <laughs> this shit is fucking wild. I have to. I have to write a song for community tomorrow. I, so I shouldn't be doing it. You said that you said that like you were like you were going to say like wow I'm supposed to mow the lawn tomorrow but it's something everybody cares about and is excited about and then you do. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, I have to, I have to feed the baby tomorrow. <laughs> What's the song about, without spoiling anything? Uh, it's just, it's just, just I just have to, it's just a, <laughs> just a song, just a song that 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 uh, Br- Britta used to listen to in uh, high school, some like like a like a like a like a cool like alternative song, like a la who, like. Uh, uh, maybe Portis Head, but uh, sh- why, don't, why don't you just try riffing a little bit for us right now? Maybe, maybe <laughs> w- 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 workshop it, workshop that shit. But um, boom. 
Do, I mean, do you have like? Uh, I don't have any Portis head of that. I was trying to do the Portis head. Uh, um, do you, you want music? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you What do you have? What do you uh, have? Let's see here. Uh, let's do. Hang on a second. I'll give you some. I'll give you some. I'll give you some instru- in- instrumental. You want some, what, what kind of mood do you feel like? Uh, I mean, like, <laughs> like, like heroin. <laughs> like that's the idea. Kind of like very, very uh, laconic. Uh, N- not mainstream. <laughs> Glass blood. Glass blood dirt. Bloody glass dream dirt. <laughs> Thank you for coming to Harmon Town, everybody. Uh, <laughs> Demorge Dem- Brown, Spencer Crittenden, Aaron McGaffey. I'm Jeff Davis, your mayor, Dan Harmon, everybody. Thank you, Jane, for the booze. Dan, Dan, keep singing. We love you. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.